So just to give a recap of what is there in 1, 2 and 4, which is the syllabus for your first year, uh, there, are, there were 11 lessons that we dealt with. So the first thing he started off with Dhvani Vishayaha Vipratipattayaha. What are all the different uh, uh, misconceptions about Dhvani? Then he laid out the Bhumika for Dhvani Siddhantam. Uh, he started off with how Vachyartha is different from Vengyartha. Not Vengyartha, but Pratiyaman Artham. It, uh, it is like how, uh, you, you know, you lead a child and show something new. How you will teach a child. In that manner, he took us from a very uh, a basic level of how suggestion can be different from expressed meaning, primary meaning. So Vachyartham is totally different. He did not mention about how, whether it is Dhvani or not. He just started off by saying, Pratiyamanarthaha Vachyate Vibhinnaha Eva. And how it was different, Vidhirupaha, uh, Nishedharupaha, etc., etc. And then Rasadihi Vachya Samartya Akshiptaha. We know Rasam, etc. is not, you don't mention it by words. Even the Rasa, when, it, when you say Shringara, there is no Shringaram that I experience from it. Only when it is Akshipta. So he slowly brought us to understand how the Vyangyartha, Pratiyamanam or Akshepaha plays a very important role in the enjoyment of a Kapdi. In the Rasa Aswadaha. And how in Itihasam also this method was used. Nowhere does he say, nowhere does uh, uh, Valmiki say Karunaha. Whereas we know that it is Karuna Rasam that is Pradhanam, but he does not mention that Karuna Rasam at all. And uh, it is only the poet's creativity that starts. So even in the first Udyota, he started off with creativity and the fourth Udyota also he ends. So we understand the poet's Pratibha based on what he gives us and based on how that Vengyartham is uh, um, shown through the Vachyartham. So the Vachyartham is important yet it is only the Vingyartha that is important. Like how you take a lamp into a dark room to find out an object. It is only the object that is in goal. That is our goal. It is not the lamp that is our goal. The lamp it is only a tool. So the Vachyartha is just a tool for us to identify the Vingyartha. And once we catch hold of that Vingyartha, we are no longer going to be looking at the Vyakarana Shuddhi or uh, is there a Samasa here? What is the Pratyam that is here? What is the Prakriti that is here, which sutra is applied here, if you keep on looking at that, there is no point of Sahityam at all uh, there. Right? So Dhani Swarupam, he gave us the form of Dhani. Then he, uh, when he started off with the Viprati Pattayaha, what are the different contradictions and misconceptions, he takes up each and every one of them and refutes them. Starts off with the Alankara, where uh, the many Alankara Vadins say that Dhvani can be included under uh, Alankara. It is just a different uh, uh, Alankara. There are some 108 Alankaras. This can be the 109th Alankara. Ananda Vardhana refutes that Paksham also by giving several examples and saying how in Samasopi or Deepakam etc. etc. It is only Alankara and Vachya Seva Pradhanyam Tatra. Only where it is Venga Pradhanyam. That is where it is Dhvani. And the next, the next section is Lakshana, where the, he shows the Swarupa Bhedam between Bhakti, Bhakti or Lakshana and Dhvani and how Lakshana, uh, um, uh, you cannot uh, um, include Lakshana, uh, Dhvani in Lakshana. There is because there is a difference in Vyaparam for both Lakshana and Dhvani. The Lakshana can actually act as one of the classifications of Dhvani, as in Lakshana Mula Dhvani, but you cannot say that Lakshana is equal to Dhvani or Dhvani is equal to Lakshana. In third Udyuta, he deals with it in great detail where Lakshana cannot be Dhvani and how Anumanam can also not be used for uh, uh, including Dhvani. Right? The last uh, misconception was about Alakshani Yatasi. Dhvani exists. A lot of people accept that there is Dhvani and we also enjoy, but you cannot describe it. Uh, he says, no, don't worry. I will explain it. I will describe it. I will give you the Lakshana and the Lakshish Lokas. And then moves on to the Dhuti Odhyotam. This was covered in about 18 lessons. Uh, 
where he first gives the two differences, two uh, classifications of uh, Vivakshita and Paravachitvani, uh, and uh, uh, which is Asamlakshikramadhuni and Samlakshikramavyangya. In Asamlakshikramavyangya, how Rasa should be given more importance. And then in Samlakshikram of Vyengyam was further divided into Shabda Shakti Udbhava and Artha Shakti Udbhava. It, there can also be Ubhaya Shakti, which he mentions later, not in this prasangam. Uh, Shabda Shakti Udbhava and uh, Slesha, there can be a confusion between uh, uh, Slesha and Artha Shabda Shakti Udbhava because Shabda Shakti Udbhava also uh, it depends on the fact that there are two meanings for words. Slesha also depends on that. So what is the uh, difference between the two? There, there is a paksham that Slesha, if there is Slesha, then there are no other Alankaras. So when there is a Slesha there, uh, is there a problem in listening? Uh, I suddenly got a, a flash that the internet is a problem. No, no, Akka. Okay. So, Sleshena, uh, Anya Alankarana, Bachitu Pratitihi. How other Alankaras, even when there are other Alankaras, Slesha also can exist with that because there is one Paksham where they say if there is Slesha, the other Alankaras cannot exist. You can, Only Slesha is prominent and you have to accept only Slesha there. Then he goes to Shabda Shakti Muladhvani. And uh, in Shabda Shakti Muladhvani, he takes up a lot of Alankaras there like uh, uh, Vyatireka. Uh, upama Dvani, Viroda Dvani and uh, Vyatireka Dvani. Then he gives examples for Artha Shakti Udbhava. Shabda Artha Uvya Shakti also he takes up after these two, after giving examples. He doesn't mention it before, but he gives an example for that later. Uh, the, the divisions of Artha Shakti Udbhava is based on the suggestor, which is used to uh, Vyanjaka, whichever is the Vyanjaka, and based on that, you have the divisions of Artha Shakti Udbhava. In the sense, Kavi Praudhokti, it can be a, 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 the Pratibha Vishesham of a Kavi which gives rise to the Artha Shakti Udbhava, the Vyangyam, or he can use a Vakta inside the poetry to express that Vyangyartha, or it is a natural occurrence that he uses in a different manner to express that beauty. So there are three types of Artha Shakti Udbhava, Kavi Praudhokti, Kavi Nibadda Vaktra Praudhokti and Swatasambhavi. For all of these, there can be Alankara Dvani, Vastu Dvani also. So he talks of only Alankara Dvani. In Kavi Prakasham, it is more systematic and uh, he gives you the div div divisions with the Udaharanam in a very systematic manner. Whereas here in Dvanya Lokam, he deals with it topic wise and what is the uh, purpose of alankara dhvani he gives a, a, a purpose for the alankara dhvani and then he says it can be vastu vyangyata also or alankara vyangyata then shows a slight difference between the dhvani and gunibhuta vyangya he does not go much into the gunibhuta vyangya se pravedaha because that is not the aim of uh, ananda vardhana his aim is not to give a concise view of the Kavya Alankara Shastra. That is not his view. His is only Dvanyaha Alokaha. So he just shows a light towards Dvani. That's all. So he only deals with it topic wise. So he gives a slight difference between Dvani and Guni Bhutam and ends the Udyotam with that. In the fourth Udyotam, uh, which we covered in 10 lessons, very simple topics where he shows the Margaha. Vartma, how a poet should use the information that Ananda Vardhana has given in his poetry. How can he use it? So Kavi Pratibha is the first thing that is necessary. If Pratibha is, see, if Ananda Vardhana places a lot of importance to the creativity. It is not Vyutpatti that is important. Just mere Shabda Jalam is not uh, uh, capable for producing um, beautiful poetry or enjoyable poetry you need that spark you need an originality you need a creativity there to to infuse the poetry with originality otherwise it is just an a word exercise right so kavi pratibha yaha anantyam and when that kavi pratibha there are different ways 
is that the poet can show his show that anantyam in different sections that is his creativity where does it the creativity apply where does that pratibha apply vani basic words in his uh, in his expression in the different types of dhvani that he can use dhvani prabedeshu either it is avivakshita vacha dhvani or atyanta tiruskritam if some idea has been expressed in atyanta tiruskritam he can use the same idea but use it in a different type of dhvani arthantra sankramitam so it, that can produce a newness to the poetry arthasya apurvatvam a new meaning can come about then vyanjakam vyanjaka bhedena kavyanam apurvatvam ityukte so when there is a suggesting factor and what rasam is uh, uh, portrayed that rasam can also be different so when bharata uh, or dasharupakakara gave a, a definition saying nataka the pradhana rasam of a nataka should be either shringaram or veeram uttar ramacharitam does not fall under the category it is an outlier there he never has he said that karuna rasam is that the because the dilemma is karuna rasam is eternal separation whereas there rama and sita join together at the end it is only vipralamba shringara and not karuna rasam but the effect of uh, the shlokas if you discount the ending then the entire natakam is very uh, emotive and it brings out that karuna rasam very beautifully that is the the, the newness that bahubuti had uh, contributed towards he he took up bevatsam as uh, the pradhana rasam in malati madhava and he wrote a not a prakaranam there prakaranam is not uh, bhibats pradhana uh, natakam you would have read in the dasharupaka lakshana that was his greatness so venjaka bedena kavyanam apurvatvam darshitam in that prasanga contextually he took up ramayana and mahabharata and discussed the uh, more on mahabharatam how moksha pradhanam uh, 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 moksha pradhana itihasa mahabharatam and then uh, is where the pradhana rasam is also shanta rasam so from there he moved beautifully into how newness can be brought based on the rasam that is portrayed in the uh, kavyam desha kaladi avastha bedena api anantyam navatvam see anantyam and navatvam go hand in hand because the variety is present or because there is newness there is a contribution to variety so the both anantyam and navatvam can be used interchangeably in this context from there he showed if there are poetry that follow the earlier greats earlier earlier ancients then is it good or bad it is not bad if it has a different shariram tulya shariravat shariri just the atma is very uh, you know it is uh, very similar in in essence it may take the essence but alankaram is different the roopam is different the the words are very different from what has been used by the ancient poet then natu dosha yatatra so he showed the different types of samvada that can happen coincidences and the different vedha he ended it with a point by saying even if the poet does not wish to continue or does not wish to take an idea from an ancient poet still saraswati will find her own ways to give what the poet seeks she will beautifully give him that because it is purva punya uh, pratibha when kalidasa talks about kumarasambhava in kumarasambhava when he talks about parvati she says praktana janma vidyaha just like how you know manasa hamsa rajaha all the uh, annapakshi it automatically every year it nobody has to show that you know light the way and say you know this is the path that you have to follow to go to manasarovar the hamsa the swans automatically come and find their way to manasarovar that is how the vidya praktana janma vidya automatically comes and uh, uh, resides in the minds of uh, mind of parvati that's the kalidasa describes it like that so in the same way if that pratibha is present and if that punya paripakam is there in the minds of a poet saraswati will automatically give what she seeks okay